Welcome everyone to our technical webinar today. We're really excited to have uh, the subject that we're talking about. Excited to have everyone on. As you get logged in, hopefully you can use this time to check your microphone settings to ensure that the audio visuals are all coming through the right way. Uh, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping and then dive right into our subject. Um, to start, many of you are probably wondering if we're going to record this session, and the answer is absolutely yes. We record all of our webinars and we post them on our YouTube page uh, later on after the webinar is complete. So be watching for uh, that webinar published on qualsys.com, uh, and you can click on the YouTube link there, or you can go directly to youtube.com slash qualsys, and please be sure to subscribe to that channel so that you can get all the, the latest videos, whether they're new webinars or commercials or other videos that we're making. So again, that's youtube.com slash qualsys, and we'll also be sending out a follow-up email to all of you and anyone else who did not attend who registered for the webinar today uh, with a link to the recording and then any other assets or information that we've built or promised during the course of the webinar today. As you get logged in, one of the things that's very important to us is that you have an opportunity to participate in today's webinar. This isn't simply a planned speech where we're going to talk about a few things. And while it is a technical webinar, technical webinars are specifically designed for you to ask questions. And we know many of you are going to have lots and lots of questions. So in the spirit of that, I want you to locate the GoToWebinar control panel you used to log into the, the webinar today and find the section called Chat or Question. And when you find that, I want you to type in where you're calling in from today. I want you to type in what you're, uh, you know, where you're, where you're reaching in. Are you, are you working from home? Are you working from your van? Are you, you know, at the office? Uh, where are you dialing in from so we can see that? We want to make sure we, we have a way for you to interact with us and for us to interact with you. Gary's dialing in from at home in Pennsylvania. Welcome, Gary. Glad you're here. Eugene's at, at, in Florida at the office. Igor's at home. Great. Nathaniel, glad that you're, you're here from Tampa. Brian in Chicago in the office. Uh, looks like William from Nova Scotia. Stuart in Virginia Beach. I was born in Virginia Beach. Um, we've got Rick. Uh, glad you're on, buddy. Nome, Alaska. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I believe that one, Rick. Um, Dennis is at home. Sean is in Sonora, California. Phil and coming to, we have so many people on today. Thank you everyone for joining in today. Matthew, Dave, Marcus, Stephen, Chris, James, Jason, Nicholas, Evan, David, Adam, Clay, Lester, Brooklyn, uh, Richard, Seth, Kevin, the list goes on and on and on. Thank you so much. Glad we got people from Quebec, people from Georgia, people from Montana, people from Montreal, Newfoundland. Well, wow, that's excellent. Um, Nova Scotia. Um, Michael Cummins says, I'm up in Lehigh. Where's Kyle Audison? Kyle's going to be on today. He's actually, uh, Kyle, stick your head in there and say hello. Uh, Paul from Johnson Controls in, in, uni in the uh, United Kingdom. We've got lots of people on from lots of different organizations, lots of many of you. Are yeah. Hey, there's Kyle. Say hi. And we're going to do some introductions here shortly, too. But we just want to say thank you to everyone who's taken the time to log on to the, the webinar today. Again, we are recording this. We are gonna make sure you have an opportunity to rewatch it if you choose to or share it with others. And we hope you do that. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and do our introduction. Um, go to the next slide here for me, Jason. And of course, my name is Jeremy McLaren. I run marketing here at Qualsys. And uh, my goal is to you know, help you guys understand what's happening here on the webinar. Um, and we will guide you through uh, some of the technical things, we've got Jason Horton, one of our technical account managers, and Jeremy Blakeney, another of our technical account managers, on the line. They're going to be presenting to us the hardware solution uh, as part of the hybrid solution. And this webinar is a technical follow-up webinar to the hybrid webinar we did just a few weeks ago, and, and many of you were on that webinar. And if not, you should definitely check that one out. It is on our YouTube page under webinar uh, recording. It's definitely one to watch and, uh, and be, you know, soak in the information that's there. Uh, another thing that I want to do before we dive into the actual um, content is announce that we've got two different very intelligent people on the line today. They're going to be helping to answer questions while Jason and Jeremy will be addressing the technical content and sharing the information with you. We also have Kevin Woodworth, our Senior Director of Technical Account Management, and Mark Bateman, another one of our technical account managers, on the line who will be helping to field your questions. And during their answers to those questions, I'll be looking through to see if there's questions that are relevant to bring up as part of the discussion today. So uh, we'll be, hopefully all of us combined together, we'll be able to get all your questions answered, whether privately or in public. And again, we really appreciate all the participation today. I wanna to start with a poll. And I just wanna know very quickly, 
if you're a current Qualtas dealer, and they two two choices here, yes I am, or not quite yet. And for those of you that are not a Qualtas dealer yet, we hope that some of the information that you receive today will be useful and will help you. Um, if you're not able to see the poll, I've heard that sometimes if you resize the window that you're working on uh, or that you're viewing on, maybe that will help the polls go. And, and uh, again, if it's not working for you, I apologize. Sometimes some browsers or some, uh, some experiences don't quite do it. And if you're dialing in from the phone today um, and not the, the screen, you're going to miss out on our beautiful cameras, our beautiful faces, and all the great things we have to present today. But hopefully you can follow along as best you can. And then you can always watch the webinar recording. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll and uh, do the next poll, which is what are you currently using for hardwire installs? And I want you to choose all that apply here because we know that you're not always using one manufacturer for certain things, uh, but I'd like to know what you're currently using for your hardwire installs, whether that's Qualtas, uh, and that could be the IQ panel with the hardwire 16 fire uh, in the large or small enclosure. Maybe you're using DSC like the Power Series Neo or, or something else. Um, maybe you're using a Honeywell or Residio product. Um, maybe you're using DMP. Maybe there's another solution you're out there. Maybe it's a NAPCO or something else that's out there. Just curious to know what kind of spread we have between the different manufacturers of, of hardwire products and, and installs. So appreciate you guys taking the time to fill out that poll for us and uh, give us kind of the baseline. We're using this poll information so we can understand what your frame of reference is. You know, obviously if there's a certain brand that you're used to, there's a certain technology you're used to, you know, our technical account managers as we go throughout the day will help kind of tune the conversation towards what you're, what you're thinking and what you're using, just to make sure that you fully understand what we're talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll and we're gonna do one last poll, which is what security wireless do you currently use? And of course the, the um, responses are similar. You might use DSC PowerG for your wireless. You might use a 319.5 megahertz. That could be the Qualtas S-Line sensors, the, uh, inter the uh, encrypted S-Line 319.5 megahertz that Qualtas produces. Or it might be Interlogic sensors. Maybe you still have some left over from before they went out of business. Maybe you're using 433 megahertz uh, DSC sensors. Maybe you're using 345 megahertz. That could be two gig sensors or Honeywell sensors. Or maybe there's another type of wireless you're using. Maybe it's a you know, a six series sensor or a DMP wireless sensor or something like that. Um, curious to know, you know, and again, this is a choose all of the above, you know, any of the ones you're using, select one or more. Um, we're just wanting to know which kind of wireless. Is. And today's webinar is not necessarily about wireless. You know, we might touch on it here and there, but the main goal is hardwire. Uh, but we know that wireless is an important part of the, the solution in a, as a whole. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll, and that actually brings me to the next slide. So, Jason, if you'll advance us to the next slide there. You know, when we talk about the hybrid solution, as we, as we presented in our webinar last week, um, you know, it really does come down to three elements. The first one being the IQ panel is the core of the solution that allows you to now create a, a, a system that uses both hardwire and wireless sensors, whether that's a legacy frequency like 319.5 or 345 or PowerG. Uh, like a, a future uh, technology like PowerG, or it's a hardwire solution uh, like the Hardwire 16 Fire. We're going to go into detail on these, but this hybrid solution is something that allows you to really do a lot of a lot of powerful things. Uh, Jason, Jeremy, again, thank you for joining us today and, and for um, putting this webinar on and doing all the preparation required to do this. I can see you've also had a close-up here of the Hardwire 16. I'm sure we'll be talking about that at some point. Any comments on the combined three-part hybrid series or uh, hybrid solution between wireless hard, hardwire and the panel do we have a comment <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah yeah i mean um it it, it really creates what kind of goes into uh, what i was going to talk about next anyways right but really creates this it, it it brings out the old and and into the today uh, to, to this century, we're, we're able to take essentially uh, what has been installed in the past, this this legacy hardwired that has been, oh goodness, I'm sure there are many, many people uh, online today that maybe even today, that's what you still do, you still hardwire a lot of systems, but there, there are, I'm going to hop to the next slide. <coughs> Most of you see this, right? This is, this is either what 
in some cases you're installing or what you've run into, right? Whether it be any one of these, you know, the majority of these three brands. And, and so this hybrid solution enables you to take these uh, types of systems and, and bring it to today, to, to be able to offer them uh, software updates and video doorbells and cameras on the screen and PowerG technology uh, or, or some type of, you know, as, as the point of the, of the uh, series, you know, this hybrid solution, right? Let, let's, let's bring these out of the past and, and, and update them to today uh, and, you know, be able to offer the homeowner something that they expect uh, while saving you money uh, be, because you're not having to rip and replace everything, right? You're be, you're able to reuse uh, what they have. Uh, as we know, of course, you know, our system is simple uh, iron contact, but, but we can do that, right? We, we, we can reuse that. And with our solution, uh, you can have uh, this, this hardwired uh, solution, this hybrid solution with a today with a Qualsys panel, right? And, and that, uh, you know, brings into our solution, um, which Jerry, you want to keep going? Is that a good comment? Thumbs up? Awesome. Take it away, Jerry. Please, please, anyone, uh, you know, Jeremy's going to, to probably chime in every once in a while. Uh, as he said, Mark, uh, Kevin are on through the chat. Uh, ask questions, you know, Jason and I do that, you know, when they're presenting, uh, we do that often. So, so we love talking and chatting back with you all and, and answering your questions. Um, you know, if you, if you have something that you think as well might be relevant uh, to uh, maybe that everyone wants to hear, uh, you know, Jeremy's going to pull some of these things out of your out of your questions, out of your chat and, and throw them in here at us. Hopefully to, well, to keep it easy though. There's already lots and lots of participation going on in the chat right now, and lots of people asking questions that will be addressed later on, like, you know, when is the PowerG hardwire solution coming out? We're going to talk about that later. Um, people asking simple questions, you know, like Nick asked, how many total zones can be on the IQ panel? 128 is the answer, and again, we're going to talk about that as we go. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to, you know, making great comments. Like Sean said, I love the hybrid solution. It's a great direction and it's going to enable me to win more business. So there's lots of great conversations going on. We want you to participate. Please chat in your questions. We're all in here answering. Uh, there's lots and lots of other questions coming in, even as I'm speaking. So um, I'll do my best to pull those out and, and bring those to an appropriate time as we're talking. But I say let's dig right into the presentation and get in so that they don't have to ask questions, but instead you can tell them exactly what you have prepared today. Yes, of course, yeah. So, uh, you know, really, so so this is our solution, right? For, I'm, I'm sure some have heard, obviously for those that were on uh, the previous uh, series or, or, or webinar that Jeremy and Kevin gave, you know, they kind of talked uh, about all of it together so so we're breaking everything down into three different segments uh today as jeremy said we'll talk about the hard question um uh, coming next you probably noticed that when you signed up for the webinar there were three uh essentially right so there was a wireless panel and uh hardwired so those will come later uh they should all be in your calendar if not uh go back in your email hit the register button look it up uh, and be sure to join those, uh, some of the other technical account managers will give those. Um, so, so this is so this is our solution, right? So you can see, and and as well, you should be able to see. We have a separate camera uh, set up uh, that's showing. You probably see my hand right uh, back there, showing this wall behind us uh, with a complete uh, with a complete setup. So, I mean, there's a panel, there's the hardwire translator. There's actually two stacked in there. We'll talk about that. Motion, smoke. Uh, a whole a whole system, right? And then, of course, on some other boards, uh, you know, we have the wireless solution. So uh, there is. We're going to talk about the the large enclosure uh, and the as we call the small enclosure of the IQ 16F, uh, essentially, right? So F actually stands for fire, uh, meaning that uh, for those that remember, we we originally built uh, a 16S, the the S line, the encrypted uh, version, the, the the signal that talks back and forth between our translator and the panel, uh, just as we do with our sensors, right? 
Uh, and then eventually it was, hey, what about fire? How can we get fire? Can we have fire? We want fire. So of course, you know, it took us a little bit, but we went through all the UL certification in the process. Uh, and we have, uh, and have been for quite some time now, uh, a, a solution for that to support uh, fire, to support your two wire smoke. And, and that's the difference uh, between the S and the F. Uh, so today as it stands, it is uh, essentially the F only, um, but we'll talk about uh, still the S uh, coming. We've actually made a way to use both those modes, uh, which we'll get into. So, uh, so let's just talk about real quick kind of uh, the, the features uh, of, the, of the translator, right? So, so our translator uh, has 16 zones. Uh, you can see there's there's three strips of terminals. Um, yeah, thanks, Jason. Uh, so the three strips of terminals, right? One on one the left, one side, one on the bottom. So all your zones are lined vertically on the left and, and right side. Um, our panel supports 128 zones. So you know a lot of people ask when we're presenting, we're talking about uh, the translator. They ask, okay, well, 16 zones. Uh, how many can I use on the panel, right? And, and it goes to the zone count of the panel, really. So it's not a matter of how many devices, how many hardwire 16s per se can you use. Um, you know, yeah, you could do the math, but, it, but it's all, it all comes down to the zone count. So technically, the hardwire 16 has 17 zones. Uh, 16 zones are, of course, uh, you know, one through 16, the, you know, uh, dry contact, uh, open close, motion sensor glass breaks and so forth. Uh, there is a zone dedicated, which we'll talk about for uh, the smoke, the two wire uh, smoke loop. And then the 17th zone is, and, and I highly recommend this, uh, of course, is the tamper terminal. And, and that tamper terminal is what allows you to pair uh, your translator into the panel uh, for, of course, uh, well, a lot of reasons. Uh, for supervision, of course, we want to make sure that our translator is supervised, so we know uh, when the power goes down, the battery dies. But also, especially if you're using smoke, right? If you're actually using that smoke loop, or even perhaps uh, you're wiring in uh, a siren, you need that translator to be uh, enrolled to your panel, okay? For the for the panel to know that it exists, right? So for the panel to be able to contact uh, uh, and and talk to the translator. Our 319 radio in the panel and, and this device is bi-directional, essentially, it's two-way. So by having it paired to the panel, you can now uh, reset your smoke detectors, you can reset your siren, you can sound the siren, of course, when your panel goes into alarm, uh, all wirelessly. Gone are the days of having to, uh, for those that have been, you know, that have used Qualsys, uh, goodness, uh, you know, IQ Panel 1, uh, when we first built this, you used to have to use that second set of wire coming up from the hardwired keypad to run it back down to the translator to trip the relay to sound the siren, right? Uh, so you do not need that, that wire now connecting the two. It is all wireless. So um, to go back to the, to the original, uh, what I was talking about, uh, 16 zones, 17 zones, uh, up to 128, right? So they're all individual. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm horrible at math. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that, but you know, 17 zones up to 128 uh, total count for the panel. So just remember, you know, if you have fobs and smoke detectors that are wireless and other devices on there, um, you know, keep that in mind when you're trying to add these other translators, right? So 17 zones essentially per translator. Um, we, we support the normally open, yeah, Oh, can't hear We've got you some though, good here. questions yeah. in here when you're uh, when when you're ready for them. Um, one question from Gregory is: Do you need a separate battery and transformer for for multiple hardwire modules? You mentioned that there's 16 zones stackable to 128. Do you need a separate battery and and transformer for each? Yeah, yeah good question. Each each uh, translator does require its own battery and power supply. You, you won't be able to stack them like a like you know like a traditional, like an, expand, like an expansion module, essentially, right? They, they are independent of each other. Um, they're independently supervised of each other. Uh, therefore, 
you, you cannot loop them together in a stackable or expansion module uh, type of fashion. Good question. Brian asks, we're going to get back into the home builder market. How many dealers are using hardwire versus wireless? And I'd love to address this, this question, and you guys can chime in as well. But, you know, there's a real big move to wireless right now. When you look at hardwire, hardwire is a really great solution. I think, you know, we've come up with a great hardwire takeover module that allows you to do a lot of great things. But when you think about a new install, you know, this, this in many ways, I would just reserve it for an existing system that already has hardwired sensors and you want to take it over and upgrade it to the IQ panel. But when you talk about a new install, there's the cost of the wire, there's the cost of conduit in, in you know, commercial type setting if you need that. There's the cost of, you know, ladders and scissor lifts and things like that that come along with it. There's the time associated with it. And a lot of people were, go, were doing hardwire for many, many years because it was cheaper. Well, now when you factor in all those other costs and you know what kind of reliability wireless has, especially when you go with Power G, there's a lot of people who are moving to a wireless solution, um, especially in a commercial type scenario. Uh, get, there's some real, real power and some real advantages to doing that there. That being said, there's still a room in the market for a hardwire solution. And you may want to look at you know, if you're doing a takeover, for example, you might want to say, hey, how many hardwire zones are there versus how many wireless zones need to be added and decide which route you want to take. You know, maybe you want to do a hybrid solution like this where you're doing a little bit of hardwire and a little bit of wired. But then, of course, you have to, you know, especially if it's a new install, you have to measure, is it worth running all that wire, climbing through those attics, you know, doing all that stuff just so that I can, you know, do some, you know, reach a further spot with wireless because of the reliability of PowerG, and again, we'll get into that in our third session in this technical webinar series, you know, the reliability of wireless and PowerG versus legacy wireless. Um, you know, many people are moving to a wireless solution for new construction. That being said, you know, there is almost no better solution for hardwire if you're doing, especially when you're doing a takeover, than the hardwire 16 module that the group is, uh, that, that the team is, is presenting today. Jason, Jeremy, anything to add to that? Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, um, I, I think that in some cases, I mean, obviously we have, uh, you know, a hardwired, a large enclosure, small enclosure, we we'll even have the device uh, itself, right? So, I mean, we have these because you, uh, our, our partners and dealers have, have asked for it, you, you want it. So I think it still has its place. Um, I, I think there are some benefits uh, you know, to a solution like this, of course, you know, to a homeowner, uh, you know, they might not want to see the contact, you know, and so therefore everything's tucked away and recessed in a door with a three inch contact uh, or, or so forth, uh, you know, and it is a hard, it is a wired uh, solution. And therefore, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I love PowerG. I, I think PowerG is awesome. And yes, I mean, goodness, the reliability, and that's the whole mantra, right? The, the reliability of hard, you know, a hard wired, a, a line, a wire in our wireless. And, and I think that's totally true. Um, I, I think that for scenarios, yeah, I think that hardwire still has its place. Um, you know, we do have a lot of dealers, uh, you know, partners, installers that, that do use it and, and love it. Um, and that's, you know, that's why we have the large enclosure now for those, you know, exactly, I believe it was Brian, right, that was saying, um, you know, for, for a new pre-wired solution, uh, you know, I think it comes down to math and, and your business and uh, cost to you as a dealer, um, you know, to a homeowner, for the most part, they don't know what they don't know, right? So if you tell them that PowerG Wireless is the best solution for them, they don't know about wire, they, you know, they don't know about hardwired solution. If you tell them the other way, I think that's the best. And so uh, individually, I mean, I think it could go both ways, but I think, both I think some of our dealers too, that are Brian uh, working in the new construction uh, market, uh, they're having the, the, the builder free wire the contacts for them, right? That, as part of their, they're already, they already have an electrician, they're running wires. Uh, some builders are willing to, to, to run a couple extra cables for the sensors, right? So, as Jeremy said, hardwire is definitely not obsolete. Um, but at the end of the day, you kind of got to weigh, you know, your options, right? What, what's going to make most financially sense for you um, at the end of the day? But uh, I, I think just to echo what these guys are saying, hardwired. I think we can all agree that 
if we were to go build our own house tomorrow, probably the majority of us would rather have hardwired in our home. Um, but wireless is so much better than it was five years ago, right? So you could go either way, right? Nowadays, we're doing a good amount of hardwired. Uh, a lot of dealers have gone 100% wireless, and that's okay. But, uh, you know, you just got to decide what's going to be probably most cost effective for you guys um, for, for new construction. Yeah, and you also have to consider that, you know, when you when you follow the money, you know, and you guys are in business to make money, you know, many of you are probably asking yourself, do I want the builder, for example, to pre-wire the house, and I don't see a penny of that, or do I want to offer to do wireless, and now the money goes to me? So, you know, there's a great opportunity for you to, you know, leverage what's best for you and your business needs and your bandwidth. Maybe it's easier for you to do it one way or the other. So these are all conversations, ingredients, and a recipe that you need to figure out what's best for you. W William asked a great question. Do these hardwire takeover modules take over any hardwire sensors, or are there only certain types they're compatible with? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a great question. So you know, if if you if you look on this page, and and, and I'll show you some others. Um, you know, a wire is a wire. Um, the 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 switch might be a little different at the end, uh, mostly whether it has a resistor built in or not. Uh, you know, a, a contact is a contact. Uh, it, it really comes down to the, the resistor more than anything, right? The, the resistor value that's uh, on that line. And, and hopefully, you know, you, you, I mean, Jason and I have done, I mean, I don't know numbers, you know, lots and lots of installs ourselves. Um, you know, we've been in the industry for, you know, over a decade. Uh, or more uh, in attics and crawl spaces and hardwired and you know we've been into some rat's nests of cat five and just gnarly messes and and so hopefully the guy that installed the system before you was nice enough to wire it pretty and you know where the resistor is uh, because if you don't it's wired somewhere else maybe he's got some junction in the attic somewhere you know that's always fun it's not on this end it's not on that end. You know that's when it gets tricky, but but really it comes down to that resistor value, um, and and so we're going to talk about that actually um, here in a second. Um, so the 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 hardwire, the fire. So speaking of resistor value, the, the fire version, right? The 16F has a fixed resistor value. Okay, it's 4.7k ohms, and and so that means that every contact that you wire into the translator must have a resistor. And, you know, the reason is, of course, we want supervision, right? We, 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 that, that, the resistor creates supervision for us. And as everybody knows as well, it, it only goes so far as the install, right? So, I mean, if you wired it properly and, and your resistor is where it's supposed to be, then, you know, you get proper supervision. But, you know, we, we, we built it to assume that, although, you know, it doesn't matter which, which end is on technically how you install it. It's not gonna affect the system, of course. Um, you know, 500 milliamp uh, onboard power. So now, you know, with with what we've done in the past, goodness, having to rig up some extra power supply uh, to get my motions and my glass breaks working, uh, or to 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 crimp and and mash all the ground wires together outside the box, and things are dangling out of the can uh, can enclosure, right? Uh, as soon as I pop it up, it's like the closet of toys. Everything just spills out at you. Um, you know, that that's the whole point of this, right, is we have power supply on board for your motions and your glass rigs and your power devices. So you can wire them straight into the two aux terminals, right? There is support for uh, siren uh, with a siren relay. Uh, and, of course, as I mentioned, we trip that wirelessly and we reset it wirelessly. And now that share, you, you have to be conscious because, that shares power uh, with the other devices, right? So when we have 500 milliamps of power, uh, that is shared amongst what the siren may draw and what uh, those power devices are going to draw. So you have to do a little bit of math, right? So if you have X amount of motions, you know, whatever, just be conscious of, well, likely it's not gonna support your 500 milliamp siren, uh, piezo siren anymore, because you have these other devices drawing power. Um, the LEDs on the side make it, oh goodness, extremely simple um, for, it, it, we essentially tone and probe the wire for you, which is super awesome. Um, you know, having, you know, two guys on an install, Jason's down in the basement, 
you know, with his uh, uh, tone, with his toner on it, and we're on phones, and I'm running around the house with my probe, listening for, uh, you know, the beeping, and then telling him what zone it is. It's it's a huge, huge time consumer. Um, and and now, the, so the way it works is, as you're all familiar, you know, our panel when you program zones, it's sequential, right? I open the door, thing, it pops up. That was front door. That's what I wanted. So by placing the, and we'll show you all this, by placing the translator into uh, enroll or EOL or learn mode, um, the LEDs pop, right? So the LEDs pop whenever you open a zone. So it doesn't matter that rat's nest and nothing's labeled. I stuff them in, I wired them, I put the right resistor on them, I wired it into the, to the translator, right? It doesn't, zone one does not have, on the translator does not correlate to and does not have to correlate to zone one on the panel, it's how you want it, right? It's it's your order. So I stuff everything, it's not labeled. I have no idea what's going on, right? I walk up to the front door, I open the front door, my panel's on learn, it, it, that's what I wanted, it learns into the panel, and now guess what? I look on my translator, and I now have, as you can see behind me, there's a bunch of you know uh, LEDs beeping and uh, uh, going off, uh, but essentially that LED next to the terminal will pop up red indicating, oh, zone 15, that's actually my front door. So now me, as because now they're my, my customer, I'm going to label that. So I don't have to one by one take an hour running around the house to every single thing all over again. I run back down, I label it, we're done. 15 was front door, right? Uh, so so we'll, keep, we'll keep going. Sorry, I, I, I know we're, we're talking a ton. Uh, large enclosure. You know, so you've seen uh, we have a skew for each. Really, the major difference is, of course, is of course this, right? Uh, is this large? Uh, well, large enclosure. It's it's super nice. Uh, it's plastic. Uh, has this uh, closet on the front. The antennas uh, pop out of the top. Uh, you can't really see them. You might be able to see them in here uh, at the top. So your antennas from your uh, translator will come out of the top of the enclosure as to not obstruct. Uh, you know, of course, your range and, and signal. Uh, and then you can stack two. So it comes with one. Uh, so essentially the 16F, right? Already stacked inside. Uh, and then, uh, let me see the next slide here. Yep, okay. Um, and then, so all of the features and benefits of the of the 16F, you can see the wired uh, tamper uh, straight to the terminals. That gives you the cover tamper. You can see those large prongs up on the top left. You can see them here, kind of in the video at the top, um, and that makes contact uh, with the tamper terminals with the springs on top. So I now have this enclosure tamper as well, like we used to have that switch uh, back in the day, right? Then of course I have an awesome zone label uh, down on the side uh, diagram, and uh, and then I have a nice big, as as Jenny would say, for any of those, I'm sure everyone's watched our old uh, Hardware 16 video, right? Or pack of goodies um is now we have a box of goodies uh so this box has your resistors right it has uh this the lug uh the spade connectors for your battery uh it has different sizes actually um these uh as you can see those brackets uh on the diagram you can see there are two uh so of course you know as brian mentioned uh, early or i'm sorry i don't know if it was brian but you do have to have Two separate power supplies uh, and so forth. So therefore, there are two spots for uh, the battery, and we have the brackets in there for uh, the, the different style of battery. One one bracket larger uh, than the other. So, and this you didn't even well, mention my my, my yeah. did you mention the zip tie rails? My favorite, yeah, my favorite yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, on yeah. every on every side of it, the, the hard part, the, the larger enclosure, you have knockouts. You have these really clean zip tie rails. We'll show you a picture of an install we yeah. just did here yeah. in a minute. It just cleans up, 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 yeah, it cleans up the wires so much. It's crazy, right? That's, that's probably one of my favorite parts. Yeah. No, it looks looks very awesome. So um, being able to have a clean install, again, I, I, I know all of you on here are, are likely methodical and, and great installers. They're your clients, your customers, you're servicing them, so you're not stuffing stuff in a box, right? Now, this is a large enclosure. Of course, it has its place, right? Uh, it, it, it would typically be for, uh, you know, the pre-wire solution. They, they have nothing. They have a bundle of wire coming down, right? And so you want something to keep it together. Uh, whereas the, the small enclosure, 
um, which is next to this. I mean, you guys can see this, it's essentially just that small enclosure around the, uh, the translator itself, right? If I go back, there you go, right? So that's the whole thing, a small enclosure. So, so you typically use that in a retrofit situation. Uh, you've taken out the old panel or the here or the comfort, and uh, yeah, there you go. Um, and and what you do is you pull out the old board. So so leave the can there. Of course, it's there for a purpose. You can hide everything. It's nice inside. Pull out the old board. And this acts as a standoff, right? So your small enclosure, the plastic, you can see we built those holes on the outside of the enclosure for a reason. Uh, throw in some self-tapping screws, bolt it down inside, pop your antenna out of the top, right? So, because the metal box, of course, is gonna kill your range um, or, or at least make it worse. And now you can still close it, right? And you have all this wiring space. So, so there are, there's a reason why there are two SKUs is because there are there is a place for both, right? Uh, before I hop on to Jason's awesome install, uh, do you have anything, Jerry, you wanted to bring up? Yeah, so there's been a lot of questions about resistors. You know, can you use, you know, any resistors? What's the range? What are the resistors that come with it? Um, you know, the, lots of people are asking questions about, Matt's asking questions, Mario, uh, Jason, they're all asking questions about resistors. So I'd love you to go into that. And then before you do that, though, talk transformers um does the transformer come with the hardwire 16 yes. uh or do you need to purchase it separately yeah no sorry but part of the of the goodie box is a power supply yes yeah, so it comes with a 16 volt power supply and and it's a fixed length uh i mean you can you can extend it if you need to um i i wouldn't suggest going past you know maybe 20 feet um uh, you know, you start running into voltage drop, it draws a lot of power, uh, the device, especially with everything uh, plugged into it as well, drawing power, uh, and of course, 18 gauge wire, uh, but it already comes uh, pre-stripped on the end, uh, so it's very simple. There are two uh, inputs, of course, uh, for your power, right, on, on the bottom of the translator in that bottom row, uh, and we'll get into that. You know, as far as the resistors, yes, yeah, so the fire, as I mentioned, it's a fixed resistor value of 4.7 uh, and this is due to the smoke support right we support those uh 10 two hour smokes on a single loop so on that uh, uh zone 16 now i will mention real fast because i know it's probably chatting up like crazy or someone's asking it they do not they are not interconnected they are not one sound all sound uh and and currently you're also unable to use the uh, I believe it's called the Osmo, uh, Osmo. yeah, Cosmo or Osmo device to reverse Osmo. polarity and uh, uh, to get those to sound. Um, for that situation, you know, ag again, good for retrofit. Uh, we support the two-wire smoke, so you don't have to replace everything. Um, but also, you know, PowerG has awesome smoke detectors that are wireless, and they are interconnected, and they meet UL, and now they even act as a siren. So, I mean, your, your, your panel goes into any type of alarm mode and those smoke detectors will sound as a siren. So, we're, we're gonna get into, Jer, uh, here in a few more slides when we go through the installation. We're gonna talk about uh, the resistor values, Jay, uh, well, Jason, myself, I uh, will talk about the resistor values, uh, what is supported. Uh, as you remember, the 16S, uh, you know, we supported one to 10K ohms. Therefore, to the earlier question, what system uh, you know, will this work with? Well, in that scenario, it would technically work with anything uh, between one and 10 K ohms, that resistor value. And then we took it away from you, right? We took it away with, hey, you know, uh, uh, the, the bigger request is, and no one has fire support, let's do fire support. Um, and therefore fixed resistor value, right? But since then, and recently, we've done something a little different uh, to, to to help you out with that. We've, we've created essentially a, a dual mode, which, which we'll talk about to so you, you kind of get that back actually. So, uh, but let me, uh, we're gonna hop to here. So we're actually in this building right now, um, giving you this lovely presentation and and I'm gonna let Jason continue, uh, press down to go forward. Yeah, so, so speaking of hybrid, right, installs, 
This is a perfect example. This is an install that uh, Mark Bateman, a lot of you guys know Mark Bateman and I completed here this last week. Um, this is actually our building. It's a, it's a clubhouse on a golf course, but there's a couple floors of, of office space. So we actually rented this building. Um, it's about 40,000 square feet approximately, four floors, there's three floors in the basement. Uh, we just took this install over, uh, this, this system over for our landlords, right? Um, so three floors of basement, 40,000 square feet. We used two translators. Uh, there was a total of 23 wired zones. We, so we, so we used two translators, uh, two batteries, obviously two transformers. We just talked about that. There were nine additional wireless zones as well that we took over. And then we are adding, we added five power G key pads and one IQ remote. Um, so, you know, speaking of hybrid, this is the ideal, you know, the epitome of a hybrid, uh, uh install, right? Uh, wireless hardwire. We used, we stacked a couple of hardwire translators on there. It's working great. Uh, landlord is super happy. Um, so this is just an example of, of, of you know, the, the advantages here of being able to do both hardwire and wireless, right? Um, so with that being said, we're going to take you through the steps. Um, you know, this we've been selling this for a little while, but 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 uh, and we'll bring our tech support manager in here to, to address some of the more common tech support tickets we get here at the end. Um, but we, we get a lot of questions about this, right? We get a lot of questions about the proper procedures, the best practices when it comes to installing this. So we actually want to take you through basically the installation manual and some of the best practices and the steps that you guys need to follow when you're installing this. And if you follow these steps, this is actually an awesome translator. It's going to work great for you guys. So as we go through the installation um, here, keep in mind that these steps that we're covering are basically straight out of the installation manual, right? I know that, especially as techs, I was a tech, I was a tech for a long time. I, you know, for some reason we have a thing against reading manuals, right? Uh, but the manual we ship in our translator box is actually pretty awesome. Uh, there's a lot of good information in there. Uh, it was built by our team. So if you, if you, if you, you don't have to remember everything I'm gonna say. A lot of this goes in one ear and out the other. Just know that the, the manual that ships in the box is what we're covering today, right? So we want to take you through those steps. Jeremy, my 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 Dana White here, he's gonna he's gonna <laughs> Dana, Dana, Dana White, but, yeah. but, but but Dane White is the guy. Yeah. Dane yeah. White here. He's gonna as I'm talking about some of this, hope that's gonna be kind of hard to see, we understand, but as as I'm talking about some of these steps, he's gonna perform some of those on the actual translate, which you get an idea of you know, what it takes, how easy it is, and, and how many, you know, how little seconds it takes yeah. to follow something. And, ju and just just quickly, uh, you know, about the manual thing, right? Uh, iPhones, IP panel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to Jason's point, reference the manual, the, 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 the guide that comes in the box, it's not a 50-page flipbook manual. I mean, it's a single-page front-back uh, type of scenario, right? So... We, we really do listen. We, we have been there ourselves. Like Jason said, we don't read manuals, uh, you know, for the most part. One panel is the same as, you know, whatever. I've installed them all, right? Um, no, there, there really is. It's just very factual, very simple uh, instructions to get you up and running uh, as quickly and as easily as possible. And, and you know, we'll cover those things because we get calls all the time about, and, and of course, you know, hey, did you look at the sheet? Well, I've done these a hundred times. And and the things that are in there are in there for a reason, not because we have to throw in, you know, 50 pages of crazy specifications and et cetera. It is very to the point, very simple. There are various, there are some very specific steps that need to be followed. If you don't follow these steps, you'll probably run into some issues. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, most of the tech support phone calls we get uh, related to this device um, are fixed by starting from the beginning, right? Don't skip step X. Don't, don't skip off any of the steps. Okay, so we're going to go through this together. So obviously, Jerry. How tall is that antenna? All, uh, Salvador wants to know what the total length of that antenna sticking out is. I'm not sure. And then Austin wants to know if you'll hold up the, the camera so that you can get a nice straight on shot of that hardware 16 and so, see it closer. With, oh, yeah, 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 we have that stand. I was going to say, I only have two hands, uh, Oscar, so I apologize. Um, yeah, here you go. How about this? Is that is that is that a little better? Hopefully, that's a little better. So, um, not yeah. sure, not sure off the top of my head, the, the length of the antenna. It's probably ten inches. Ten inches, about. We could we could measure that and, and follow up with y'all on that, but yeah, about ten inches. If that's Salvador, is that Salvador Landin? 
I mean, he can message me. Yeah. yeah it's Salvador and Cheddar. Oh, okay. I'm saying that right. Tell me too if you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll follow up with that. Um, so Jeremy mentioned it. Um, our small enclosure is designed and, and is able to go in the existing can. So if you if you're taking over an old system, translators, it's completely standalone, right? We're no longer piggybacking off the old system. So when you're going to do a hard bar takeover, take that old system out of the box, throw it in the trash. You don't need it. Take that old transformer that's been in the attic for 20 years that's turning brown, throw it in the trash, right? We've got everything that you need in this module. So put it, replace it, replace the old board inside the metal can. That's okay. Just make sure, as you can see on this slide, that the antenna is leaving the metal can. That's really important for range, okay? Uh, so first step that uh, you don't want to skip. Okay, make sure that leaves canvas is in the manual. Okay, so you don't have to remember that. Okay, and then and then probably one of the single most important steps that you guys uh, need to follow when it comes to installing the translator is to do a memory reset, a memory reset out of box. This is extremely important. Um, out of the factory, we bench test these. Uh, they show up in the box with with a memory. We want to clear that memory. We want to start from scratch. We want to start fresh. Um, so this is extremely important. Um, so yeah. Why? So you erase the memory. So, so, but, so what happens if I don't? So what am I, what am I going to see? So basically, the translator will show up with with a memory, right? These zones may think that there's a zone in them, right? They're going to be programmed. So as you start plugging in your zones, um, you get all sorts of funky things: false tampers, false trips, right? Because the translator is trying to trying to it thinks that there's a zone in there that maybe isn't, right? Yeah, you you, you might see, you know. When, when someone has not reset, uh, you know, and, and granted, it's not, it's not every time, but, but the best practice is just reset it, right? Um, what happens sometimes is, you know, you're learning a zone uh, and you go to leave EOL mode and, you know, and, and you'll see this as we go, but then none of the LEDs turn off. It like, looks like everything's open or it's only sending tamper now. It's it learned in, but, my panel is only showing when I open the door, it's going tamper, or sorry, tamper, close, tamper, or sorry, tamper, open, tamper, open. Uh, so uh, those are some things that you'll see, you'll know right away uh, that it is not the correct operating state, right? If it is, there are a couple of things you can look for, uh, and, and one is those zone LEDs, right, on the side of the panel, so or sorry, on the side of the translator. Um, when you have exited that EOL mode, uh, all of those lights should go off. Uh, also, your um, you have three little lights. We'll talk about that here in, in, in a bit at the, uh, for the status uh, of the RF and, and uh, so forth. But um, that will change. You'll, you'll know very simply and quickly if you are in the correct status or not. And, and this is why you're getting those crazy tampers, right? So, so let's yeah. So, so let's reset it here. So um, it's already powered up. Yeah, you, so, you can talk. Yeah. So it's already powered up. So he's going to power it down. But as you can see on the slide here, right, out of box, before you power it up, um, you want to make sure that the thing's totally powered down. No battery, no transformer. Um, hold the memory reset button. It's kind of hard to see, but on, on the translator, there's two buttons. There's an EOL button. We'll talk about that. And there's a memory reset button, right? So Jeremy's going to hold the memory reset button for, and, and reapply power. Um, and he's going to do that for, and he's going to hold that button for three seconds, okay? Um, you'll see that all the lights will start going crazy, right? Uh, the processor, the RF light, all the, the three LEDs on there, uh, letting you know that it's been reset, okay? And now you can see, remember before, there was all those LEDs kind of blooping and, and so forth. So now we know... None of the zone LEDs are known, right? So we know that there's nothing in there. There's no existing... Hey, memory. real quick, guys. Yeah. For those of you that are watching and want to see what Jeremy's doing on the Hardwire 16 close-up camera, know that on your GoToWebinar um, viewing panel, there should be a little line between the presentation and the cameras. You should be able to actually change it so that your cameras go bigger. So if you want to see a little bit more cameras, uh, you can just simply drag that thing down or to the left or right, depending on how you have it configured. And that will make that camera a little bit uh, larger, enabling you to see a little bit better. Additionally, we are in the middle of editing a hardwire translator tech install video. So any day now, we will have a video that you guys can can pull up on YouTube or our, our dealer portal and reference everything that we're talking about here and see it 
high quality production marketing style video, right? So yeah, that's that's gonna be available any day now. Yeah, so so you'll notice, and and we'll show you kind of the LEDs as we go, but you know, it just looks like a big blurb here on your screen, but there are two, uh, right? So when it's not, uh, when when those notes have been uh, learned in, your, your EOL catalog continues uh, to blink, right? And then of course your processor uh, continues to blink as we've just master reset it. So we'll go, we'll continue through the steps here, yeah. but keep, yeah, great questions, keep them going. Okay. Single most important step, master reset the, the, the transit router box, okay? By simply holding that memory reset button while flying power, okay? Um, so going back to, to the resistor value, right? At this point, you're gonna to wanna to decide what, what what type of install you're doing. Uh, so Jeremy kind of mentioned it. A lot of you are used to our old translator, right? The IQ16S translator. Uh, we did a, an EO, uh, uh, EOL calibration uh, learning mode on that, right? Basically that translator supported any resistor value between 1K and 10K. Uh, as he mentioned, we went away from that um, uh, for UL purposes and, and, and stuff like that. We went to a fixed resistor value 4.7K. We're excited to, to officially announce, if you haven't heard it, that we are going, we're, we're combining the two now. So on, on new uh, rev versions of, of, of this hardware translator, you'll actually be able to choose, right? So if you want a UL certified installation, you can use the 4.7K fixed resistor value. If you're not worried about that, uh, and you want to use the, the EOL calibration mode, the one to 10K uh, ohm resistor value learning, um, you can actually switch it. There's a mode that you can actually switch. Um, and you do that by holding the EOL button while applying power. So same process we just did to, to memory reset, but instead of holding the memory reset button, we're holding uh, the uh, EOL learn button, right? So this is what you'll see. This is how you can tell the difference between the two modes. Okay, so out of box, it's going to ship in UL mode, which is the, four, the fixed resistor 4.7K value, right? Um, to change that, as I just mentioned, you'll hold the EOL button while applying power, okay? And then you'll notice that the processor LED, that's what you're looking for, that's actually going to change, okay? So um, in UL installation, uh, if UL installation mode is not required, right, and you want the, the ability to use anything between 1K and 10K, um, follow process we just we just covered. Okay, you'll notice that the processor LED will blink slowly, one time per second. That's telling you that the transmitter can now learn any resistor value between one and 10K. Hopefully that's clear. Um, um, note that zone 16 is always going to require a 4.7K. That's our fire loop. So regardless of what mode you're in, you have to use a 4.7K resistor for the fire loop zone 16. Okay. Um, but you'll notice that that LED will start to blink slower. Okay, and this is all in the manual, um, but that allows you to switch between the two modes. So if you want the UL mode uh, or the one to take it, one to 10K mode, you can actually switch on the, on the new version of the transit. Anything to add there? No. Great. Okay. Um, Jeremy, any questions about that? Th that one's a little more a little more messy. To, so there's to been explain. lots of questions about resistors. I think we've answered all of them in the chat. If you feel like your answer, if your question about resistors was not answered or you, you know, it wasn't quite clarified based on what uh, Jason and Jeremy just described for you, please resend it. Um, there have been a couple other questions like, uh, you know, what's the maximum distance between uh, the panel and the translator that you can do? Um, you know, how much range do you have between that, um, which we might get into here in a moment. Um, they also want to know if the, if you can still get the 16S uh, or if it's only the 16F now. Yeah. Um, yeah, good question. Uh, so um, for both of those, so, so for the S, uh, goodness, I mean, we've been shipping the F, the fire for quite some time now. Um, I mean, there might be a random. Yeah, we just, we don't ship that one anymore. It's possible you might find it on the distributor yeah. shelf, but I believe all the ones we're doing now are F. And really, it's just a matter of changing the resistor uh, EOL it, learning to be able to do fire or the other, right? You'll, you'll have to you have to verify, um, you know, via uh, label. The part number is the same, even mm -hmm. for the dual mode. Um, it's essentially some firmware change. There's a there's a revision change. Um, if, if you don't see that, I mean, it's, it's simple to see, of course, if you follow the instructions, um, and, uh, you're able to place the translator into the separate mode, then of course, awesome. You know, you, you can use one to 10 K ohms. Um, yep. um, 
One other comment too, David Curry wants to make sure we know, and he said, you know, respectfully, I uh, want to suggest it's inappropriate to do uh, a demo panel with end of line resistors in the panel. There's no supervision on the circuit with if there's endo if there's EOL in the panel, and and we of course you know we know that this you know I and I don't know if you just got some beans here. I don't know if there's actual resistors right there, but um, you know that is something that it, if you are seeing resistors, the resistors do go and, and EOL is end of line, right? Yep, 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 yeah, yeah. So so we mentioned that kind of at the beginning, of course. You know, you as an installer, uh, you know, if you're pre-wiring a home, of course, you know, you have full control over that, right? Um, walking into a retrofit, uh, say that's what this is, uh, you know, you, you may not get to uh, choose. Uh, it, it might be very difficult. They they painted over the the switches five times and, and now you're going to you know, kind of gunk up their door, trying to dig them out and put resistors on the other end or the, the cable's not long enough uh, and so forth. So, yeah, don't, don't take that this. That another situation where wireless might be more appropriate to deal with yeah. than having to, you know, do all that work, right? Don't, don't take this as a... The demo, We this is, this is actually our, our tech support office, right? Uh, this is something we use for testing and, and we aren't necessarily looking for, for, for the supervision, the blind supervision. As you can see on the install that we did here in Sleepy Ridge, the resistors are not in the can. They are end of line, as a, as a, as a proper install should, should be. At the end of the day, you're right, right? A, pro a proper install should have a true end of line resistor. Most dealers aren't doing it that way. You know, do it's, your thing, right? Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's debatable. <laughs> to, to each is known. To each is known, right? right? Sure. Uh, yeah. have, have it super Hugh, Hugh asked a really good question, you guys. When, is a re when a resistor value is selected or, or learned in, is it common for all 15 zones or can each, you know, if you've got multiple resistor values in a system, does the system learn it by zone? Yeah, good question. So, so yes, actually. So every zone or every terminal can individually calibrate the, the, the resistor value or the resistance value of every line. Because again, one line is longer than another. It's been spliced four times and so forth. So uh, you know, uh, you're going to have some differences anyways, even if the resistor is a little off, uh, it, it'll support that. But it, we're, we're going to so, keep moving. So just, uh, yeah, just, 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 just to summarize, out of box, this new translator will ship in UL 4.7K mode. As you can see here, and again, again, this is the manual. The processor will blink rapidly eight times per second. If you want to switch it, power up the module while holding the EUL learn button, you'll notice that that processor LED will switch from eight times per second to a slow blink one times per second. And that's a quick, easy way to tell what mode you're in. You can switch back and forth as many times as you want. If there are you know, end of line resistors on 10 different sensors, you know, it might be easier to switch it over to the, 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 count, the, the one to 10K mode and not worry about swapping all those out, right? So, um, and then just, just quickly to, to, to answer the question as far as range goes, right? This is, a, this is a wireless sensor. The panel doesn't know any different for the most part, right? So. At the end of the day, um, you know, range, test it like a, like a normal sensor in the panel use settings. Use your sensor test, sensor test verify the signal, right? Um, you can see that signal strength compared to the noise floor and, and know right then and there, um, um, you know, if it's going to be reliable or not. And, and we can talk a little bit more about that offline if anyone's interested. We have a ton of training on that. Our installation manual talks about that test. Uh, so make sure you're using that for sure um, on the hardware translator uh, as well as your wireless sensors, okay? Um, so once you've decided, you know, what you're doing, 4.7K resistors or, you know, you're using the, uh, the calibration mode 1 to 10K, uh, you can actually get into the nitty gritty, start wiring the thing up. Um, the beauty, and, and Jeremy talked about this, is, uh, of the translator, is that continuity meter that's built into the translator. Uh, the install we did here at Sleepy Ridge was a mess. Huge rat's nest, half the zones weren't labeled. Uh, on a traditional install, we would tone and probe every one of those to figure out what they are, right? Um, we didn't have to do that, right? We jammed these wires into the translator. We went and opened up the front door. Zone eight lit up. We know that zone eight is the wire for, for the front door, right? So make sure it's all really easy if you pay attention to those LEDs, okay? Um, so <clears throat> plug your wires in. Again, uh, we, we did some, some labeling here on this, um, on this uh, slide just to kind of point out the differences between everything here. Um, so your yellow, the yellow dots there, that's your zones one through 15. Okay, that'll support 
pretty much any open close, normally closed, normally open sensor. The red dots on the left, that's your zone 16, that's your fire loop. Okay, so that is dedicated for two our smoke detectors. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then your blue, uh, your blue dots there at the bottom um, are your tamper terminals, right? So that uh, if you're using a small enclosure, there's nothing wired there, wire in your own tamper or use that those tamper terminals to learn the translator in. Um, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Or, or uh, if it's again, if it's in the in the large enclosure, that will come wired for you, right? And then there at the bottom, you have your uh, on the far left, there aren't any colored dots. That's our, 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 our power supply, right, our, our input. Um, and then we have our aux out um, for any of your power devices, your motion detectors, your glass breaks, those kind of things. And then we have our siren relay. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I just wanted to break this down. Uh, these are all hard to see on, on the slide, what, what's what. So we wanted to, to kind of break that out um, and, and identify what all these terminals are. Um, and then I wanted to mention, too, this does support normally closed and normally open, right? So if you are if you have any normally open zones out there, we can support them, right? The difference between programming a zone as normally closed, normally open is how you wire the resistor. As you can see on this slide, um, switching a resistor from series to parallel uh, or parallel to series, right? We'll, we'll swap that, right? Um, so the, so the, the translator does support both normally closed, normally open. Um, uh, and so to answer the question earlier, when it comes to hardwired zones, with the exception of life safety, we can pretty much support anything, right? Um, so once we've got this wired up, we've got all of our, our zones in there, we want to learn the translator into the panel. Uh, Jeremy talked about this as an extremely important step. Uh, we need that for a bunch of different reasons. We need it to be able to supervise the translator, right? Um, we need that as well to communicate to the translator, right? If we, if we have a smoke detector or a siren wired into the translator, our panel has to be able to communicate to that translator uh, so that we can reset those devices. That is not going to work if the translator is not learning the panel, okay? Um, so we do that by simply, it, it, again, it's like a wireless zone, right? So um, we're gonna put the panel into learn mode, okay? Auto learn mode. Uh, we're going to short the tamper terminals uh, with, a, with a small piece of wire, okay? Uh, that will learn the translator into the panel, we'll program it, we'll name it, we'll save it, okay? Once that's done, we want to close that tamper terminal, or it's always going to show us open. Uh, you can do that by jumping a little, a little, a little wire jumper uh, in between the terminals. Um, I thought I had a, a picture of that on here, um, but uh, you want to make sure you close that tamper terminal so it's not showing open or wire in a real, a real tamper. Um, but this learns in the same as any of our wireless zones. Put the panel on auto learn, short that tamper terminal, learn the translator into the panel, name it, save it. Uh, close the tamper terminal. Anything to add there? Pretty simple, okay? Um, so moving on here, um, let's talk about the fire loop real quick. Um, again, zone 16 on the translator uh, is dedicated to fire, Okay, we support two hour smokes. Uh, we are only UL listed to support two hour smokes, and we're only UL listed to support system sensor smokes, okay? So as you can see on the screen here, there's a couple models of system sensor that we are certified to use. Uh, the 2W-B, the TWT-B, and the 2WTA-B, okay, this is in the manual, it's on our dealer portal, you don't have to write that down if you don't want to, um, but those are the models that are UL certified for the translator. Uh, you can do a loop of up to 10 smoke detectors per translator, right? So if I have three translators, technically I could I could take over, you know, 32 hour smoke detectors, right? Uh, 10 per translator. So um, you've got a lot of a lot of room there for, for takeovers when it comes to smoke detectors. Um, anything out there? Yeah, no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about the siren relay. Uh, so we do have a wireless siren relay built into the translator. This is actually a really cool feature. Um, you know, as he mentioned, if you have any experience with our old translator, uh, uh, some of our older panels used to have to run a wire back to the, the relay on the panel to get that to trigger. We don't have to do that anymore. Um, but there's a, a, a couple steps here that you want to follow, right? Uh, out of box, technically, this relay isn't active. Um, it's not powered up. Um, we can activate that or power that relay by, relay by running a jumper from the aux out, okay, at the bottom of the translator to the in on the siren input, right, on, on the siren relay, okay? Hopefully, hopefully you can see uh, the, the, what Jeremy's doing here. He's kind of pointing out that little red jumper that we did to power that relay, okay? 
Once that's done, the relay is active um, and, uh, and uh, the output is, is, is ready to go. You plug your, your siren in there, the two wires, and it's ready to go, right? When the panel goes into alarm mode, we'll trigger that siren. When the panel is disarmed, the panel will reset that siren for you. So it makes taking over hardware sirens really easy. If you, if you are in a situation where you need to take over a hardware siren, uh, I, you, you got to go with the hardware with the, with the takeover module. It's much easier to do on this module than it is uh, using the relay on the panel. Uh, which doesn't have any output. Um, so uh, just make sure that that relay is powered. Um, plug your zones in there. Make sure that you're not using more than 500 milliamps. Jeremy talked about that. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll trigger and reset that, that, uh, that siren for you. Okay. Any, any questions so far? We covered some, some good stuff here, Jeremy. Is there anything worth mentioning? Before we move we on. Did, and that's, I, that I think we're doing a very good job answering the questions. We've got, you know, we're already kind of over time. So I would say let's finish the presentation. Many of the questions that are being asked are going to be answered through the course of the presentation, but we'll make sure that we get all the questions answered by the end. So keep going. Um, and then, and then obviously, you know, you're going to have to hook up a battery. So this is the one thing that we don't ship with our hardware translator. Uh, I get that question a lot. Um, so when you go to the distributor and you pick up that hardware translator, you're going to want to pick up a battery as well. Um, so uh, we support uh, for for uh, UL solutions a five amp hour battery. Um, if you're using the, hard, the 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 large enclosure, we have the the mounts for it, the brackets for it. Jeremy talked about that. Um, so plug in your power, plug in your battery, plug in your power. Right, uh, using the transformer that we ship. Make sure you use our transformer um, and and power that thing up. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say real quick, and you're, you're probably getting questions, um, you know, does it support more? Uh, I mean, technically, yes, right? Um, so do we support a 7 amp hour battery? Technically, yes. Uh, it is simply um, recharging, right? How long, it will, it will then take longer to uh, recharge a 7 amp hour battery versus a 5 amp hour battery. So you may see, you will see, excuse me, uh, for a longer period of time, like a, a, low, a low battery uh, signal or alert uh, on the panel until that 7 amp hour battery is fully charged. Yeah, so you do support 7 amp. Uh, note that for UL installations, 5 amp is required, okay? Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll support a bigger battery, right? It's just, it's just a matter of the recharge rate. Um, so power it up, get, get it going, right? Pretty simple. Um, so now we get into more of the programming, right? That, that, was, that was more step one, set up the translator, um, you know, plug your zones in. I, I skipped ahead, we already kind of talked about this step, but get everything wired up, um, following the steps we just outlined, and start learning everything in, okay? So we talked about how to learn the translator in the panel, okay? Uh, that was pretty simple. Um, something that we might have left out, when you're learning the translator or any of the zones in, right, you're gonna wanna make sure that you put it in EOL calibration mode, okay? So do you want to do that on this real quick yeah. and show what that looks like? There's yeah, an EOL cal up. button on the translator. And we'll burn through this here really quick. Yeah, we'll burn through this quick. Jeremy's just going to press that button. Okay. And watch, so watch all of the, the LEDs uh, on the side here. You're going to see them. They're going to blink. And then I'm going to turn off. Okay. Okay, so, so now it is in that quote-unquote EOL or, or that learn mode. So now if I trip a zone, uh, it will, you'll see that LED pop uh, next to uh, that terminal. Um, so I don't know. If, so uh, I, th I think we're going through the next slide anyway. Yeah, we go. Yeah, we can, for the sake of time, we can open it. It'll learn into the translator here, I think. Yeah. So that's, that's a little hard to see, we understand. I just opened a, a door sensor. That was wired to the module. You can see that that LED lit up. Zone one was wired to a door sensor. When I opened it, the zone lights up. I know that that wire is going to that door sensor. Um, and we would do that while the panel's in learn mode, right? It's going to learn in like a regular old wireless sensor. You'll name, program it like you would any wireless sensor and move on to the next one, right? So once you've got everything wired up, put the translator in EOL learn mode. Learn all your zones into the panel, okay? Um, one by one. Um, and, and, and you're just going to want to go through and trip them like, like you normally would, right? Open and close the door, uh, activate a motion detector. Um, if it's a smoke detector, you're going to want to learn that in by using the test button, not by tampering, okay? So you want to make sure that you actually trip that smoke detector to learn it in. But, but you're going to trip this stuff like you would in, on any other install, right? Once it's learned in, once the transitor's in EOL learn mode, our panel's in learn mode, we're going to walk through and trip everything, program it, yeah. game it, save it. 
Make okay. sure you make sure, of course, you tamper, right? You leave the jumper in there. Of course, with the large enclosure, it's a little different. It's already wired, and you have these top two, they're, they're springs that then uh, connect to, you, you can't see it in the image, but there's two large prongs on the top of the door here uh, that essentially will uh, jump across and hit the tamper. Um, and then if it was closed all the way, it would short that, right? And, and learn to your panel. Um, so we talked about this. We're, we're trying to we're trying to speed it up here. Put it in EOL learn mode. Trip your zones. They'll light up. You'll know which wires which. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So 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 going back one slide. Uh, once you're done, the one of the other larger mistakes is when your translator is in this EOL or this learn mode, it's sending a tamper signal to the panel every time. Okay. So when I open up the front door, just as if I'm opening a contact. It's sending a tamper uh, each time, right? So for the sake of, uh, you know, not wanting to blow your brains out, you can turn off on the panel settings, the open close uh, report allowed for auto learn, right? So that way you don't have random door contacts or wireless devices uh, chiming in to try to pair to the panel um, just by simply tripping them. So you can turn that off. It's gonna send a tamper. Make sure you exit afterwards if you do not, right, I'm going to hit this EOL button here for like a second, and you're going to see now, see the light is gone on the side. So I'm in normal operation mode. As I meant, and as I mentioned before, the EOL cow light, when, when I reset it, was blinking because it hadn't been calibrated yet. And it, it now is off, meaning that something has been calibrated or learned. So you want to be in this mode. Uh, for operation, otherwise you, you're going to keep getting tampers when you open uh, the door, right? And to that calibration, so that that whole process, what's happening to the question with different resistor values? When I hit that button to enter that EOL mode and I'm tripping my devices, the translator is noting the resistance value of every single terminal and doing its voodoo magic math in the background to therefore know what should be you know, in normal operating zone versus tamper and et cetera, so. Perfect, okay, so make sure you take it out of EOL mode. Um, this is, this. I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, the zones, the zone IDs will come in a little bit differently, right? So obviously we have an ID for the translator. Uh, that might be, for example, as you can see here on the screen, 8CD5A0. And then for each wireless, for each zone that comes in after that, right, zones one through 16, they'll have We'll, we'll change that last digit, right? So for zones one through 10, uh, one through nine, that last digit will change from zero to one, to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, all the way up, right? Uh, once we get to zone 10, we switch to alphabetical, right? So zone 10, that last zone will change to A. Uh, zone 11 will change to B, zone 12 to C, and, and so on, right? Zone 16 will change the third digit, right? So I don't want to spend a ton of time here, but this could be helpful. Uh, you know, for example, we did the, this install here at Sleepy Ridge. This is a busy business. There's people coming and going like crazy, right? We couldn't necessarily trip the zones one by one as we wanted them. People were walking in and outdoors, motions were being tripped, it was coming in like crazy. So as they came in, we were able to identify the, the DLID that came in and, and know right off the bat that that DL code was associated to zone three on the transmitter, right? Um, and we were able to, to label those zones uh, accordingly using that information. So uh, this can be helpful if, if you're on a busy install like we were, uh, just know that that last digit will change based on every zone, okay? Um, yeah, so. To, 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 to hurry and finish up, we'll, we wanna talk about something that's coming soon. We'll give our tier three tech support manager just a couple minutes to address common tech support issues that come up related to installing the, the hardware translator, and then we'll wrap it up and let you guys go. So. Um, we'll turn it over here to Jeremy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. So, uh, goodness, people have been, and you know, there's been a lot of buzz uh, about this product coming soon. Uh, as you know, we Qualsys uh, affiliated with uh, JCI, DSC, uh, et cetera, uh, and supporting PowerG, of course, the only next uh, question was, well, when do we get a PowerG translator? Why aren't you building a PowerG translator? We want a PowerG translator. And, you know, we have, multiple SKUs, right? A 433, a 345, a, a 319 version. 
Well, we don't make a translator in all those versions, right? We make a 319.5. But what, what, what can we have that is essentially universal that will work across all of my, of my panels? If I go into a home that has a Honeywell Vista that's partly hardwired uh, and, and partly uh, uh, wireless, right? Um, I, don't have a, I don't have a hardwire translator for that. So then you're kind of picking and choosing. So uh, DSC, JCI, uh, uh, finally, essentially, uh, this is a real model. This is, our, this is in our office. Uh, this is a PowerG uh, translator. So it is very, very similar to what we have today. Uh, you can see, it, I mean, it looks like, you know, an old Neo or, or Power Series board um, that, of course, they did all kinds of stuff too, to make it transmit on that power g frequency so so now you get this translator of course with uh sorry i'm going to tilt that and move that away for a second now you get that translator with all the awesome benefits of power g the encryption uh you know the 128 ads uh encryption between the two the range of course of power g uh to the panel uh you know you're not worrying about that you know that scenario that i mentioned but not only that, I mean, look at look how this thing stacks up, right? So, I mean, uh, support for both two and four wire smokes. Uh, they have coming, <coughs> excuse me, expansion module, uh, stackable to 16 zones, siren output, uh, four programmable uh, PGM uh, outputs, right? Uh, so being able to use that, which, which today, uh, I mean, we don't have, right? And that's something that, goodness, anyone that's on this, uh, webinar right now are those guys that um do the the not the one-off but but you're i don't say you're smarter than the other guys maybe you are smarter than you're smarter than i am but but you know using using the 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 relays and and all those things to just make this really truly awesome uh system right well we've never had programmable output so we get to bring that right seven amp uh sorry seven mill <laughs> excuse me seven seven million, yeah 700 yeah. million yeah. uh I'll battery 24 hour of course backup battery it is supervised right uh so essentially now we're converting of course this uh, you know whether it's power series concord you know whatever it may be it's a wired lead right into to start to, to make the, the 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 you know it's worth mentioning that to start we'll only support two of these they're eight zone or only going to support two of these out of the yep. box, right? That's so 16. that's what so 16, 16 zones. Okay. Yep. Um, this is this is fairly new, right? Uh, we're doing some internal beta testing. This will come very soon here, probably available to anybody by by the end of Q3. More information will come on this, right? Is what I'm getting at. We don't have all the details and all the specs on this right here in front of us right now, but but trust me, as we get the, that information, yeah. and as this we're becomes, super excited. We're excited about it. Yeah, we'll share this with you guys as it gets a little bit closer. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a for you only, right? It is a closest only solution. Uh, so, you know, we have what 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 can we not do? Stay tuned. Yeah. We're going to get you guys all the information you can ask for on this bad boy um, uh, as as that becomes more available to us. So, just to wrap up, if you have to go, I know we're over. Just jump off. Don't worry about it. But we do want to spend. We do want to take a second to introduce Kyle. He is our tier three tech support manager. He's the guy on the phones, on the tech support all day long, answering your guys' questions, um, helping you guys resolve your issues. So just before we wrap this thing up, we wanted to give him a chance to briefly cover the, the, the top issues that he sees on a daily basis when it comes to installing the hardwire translator, right? So he, he sees all the daily you know, issues that come up. We wanted him to, to run through those real quick uh, and share maybe some best practices when it comes to troubleshooting those issues. So without further ado, Kyle, if you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, just a brief five minutes uh, uh, overview of what you got, what you see out there in the field. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm sure I've talked to a lot of you guys in the field, and you know, spent lots of time troubleshooting stuff, and so I'm kind of excited to be on here and kind of go over some of this stuff with you guys. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over some of the top issues I see in the field with the 16F hardwire translator and some of the best practices that I have found that really helps kind of get the ball rolling when you're at that job, been stuck there for a while. Um, uh, first thing I want to go over is the two-wire smoke detectors. Uh, when you guys are connecting those on the 16F translator, 
uh, a lot of times you'll get a tamper signal instead of a, a fire alarm and a fire trouble condition. Uh, Mark, um, Jason and Jeremy covered a lot of this stuff, but I'll just briefly cover it again. Guys, simply going back to defaulting the translator, when you guys first initial do the install, that, that pretty much sums up how to fix that. Uh, make sure you are putting that 4.7K resistor in your end of line smoke and make sure that you guys have the translator enrolled into the panel. Um, if you guys are ever midway through a install with this and you have to do a memory reset, uh, keep in mind you do not have to delete out all of your zones. Um, that's one big thing. The translator is really smart. You can actually learn your zones into the translator, and then you can go in and learn them into the panel. Um, so if you ever have to reset the translator, you know, halfway through your install, um, perform a memory reset, and then usually I advise guys to delete the translator and then enroll it back into the panel by placing it in the EOL learn mode. And then what you'll want to do is just go hold down the the test button on your smoke, any smoke, and then enroll it, and then take the translator and panel out of learn mode and just test it to make sure it's resetting. Uh, that's that's probably the number one issue I see with with the two wire smokes. Um, if your hardwire translator is ever showing a malfunction on the on the IQ panel home screen. Um, it either one wasn't learned in correctly or it somewhere lost communication with the panel. Usually if you go back to the translator, pull out that jumper wire, stick it back in, that resends a new signal to the panel and helps clear the, the malfunction. Um, we, we did have a recent issue with some, uh, with some dealers with the, with the translator showing a low battery uh, on alarm.com. Um, it was showing like a low battery, low battery restoral. Um, if you guys looked at the 252 release notes for this, we, we did have a fix for filtering some of those reporting low battery issues. So if you guys are ever experiencing that in the field and you test your battery and it has full battery, go in and update the panel to 252 and then um, power down your translator pull off your battery leads, stick up the battery leads back on, power up the translator again, and it should it should uh, help fix that and also a workaround. Um, and then guys, just, just remember the, the, the legacy mode, which supports the one through 10K resistors. Um, uh, make sure you hold down the EOL learn button, like they mentioned before and went over with you guys, the processor light will change so you guys know what, what different legacy modes um, you're working with. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things I see in the field as well are, um, it's not this anymore, did I change something? Oh. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of things I see as well, guys, are life safety devices on the translator, you know, uh, flood sensors, heat sensors. Uh, I just wanna just make sure that for UL certification, our translator does not support that. Our panel does support programming for it, so you guys are kind of on your own on, on those. Um, if you guys ever have zones showing tamper on the panel, there, there's either two, two reasons why this happened. One, you didn't either factory default the translator, and you're not using the correct resistors. Um, that can cause a zone showing a tamper on the IQ panel. And another question I get asked a lot, guys, and, and Jeremy covered this, is uh, how many translators can you have on a panel? Um, you just wanna think about 128 zones, divide that by 16, that gives you about seven translators to, to enroll onto one system. So, um, so yeah, guys, I just wanted to cover some of that stuff with you today. Thanks for having me. I enjoy working with you guys and, and interacting with you every single day and, and helping you guys out. So thanks for giving me the time to, to share with you guys. And 
and let me know if you guys have any questions reach out to tech support at qualsys.com and also uh give our give our support line a call they're they're always available and and we enjoy helping you guys out so thanks for having me i'm going to give jason back the the presentation and thank you we're wrapping up so again if, if you didn't get your questions answered today email tech support at um and, and we'll follow up with you guys um we went a little over we, we covered a lot of information in a short amount of time um so if you're left with any any question marks let us know reach out we'll follow up with you um and uh if we need to we can we can we can do another more personal training for anybody that needs it so thanks for being yeah, on we really think you know we're grateful for both of you guys you know the work you know sean typed in these guys clearly know what they're doing kudos to them thanks for the installer pro instructions um several other people making compliments about how thorough this was and how detailed it was how much they you know you can tell we're using a good quality product uh, lots and lots of great compliments here so everyone thank you for the participation today jason and jeremy thank you for the detailed presentation and and we know we kind of derailed you a little bit with some of the questions there there were quite a few questions coming in there and a very special thank you to both kevin and mark for fielding all those questions today because you guys have literally just been typing nonstop since the beginning of the webinar. So thank you everyone for your participation. Just a reminder, we did record this session. We will be posting it on our YouTube channel later on today. You will get a follow-up email with a link to that presentation. So you're welcome to rewatch it and you are also able to share that with other people. And next week we'll be doing a similar session, uh, part two of our three-part series on how a hybrid solution works. This part was part one, talking about hardware solutions, uh, integrating with what will be part two, the IQ panel. And we'll talk all about the IQ panel and all the, uh, the different devices that you can connect to it, all the different features you can get to it. We had a lot of great questions today about IQ panel. Many of those will be covered in next week's session. If you're on today, you are already registered for that session. All you have to do is click on the link next week when it's time and the same registration you did will get you on this one. Uh, on next week's webinar and the third session which will be all about dual srf uh the wireless be uh, able to connect both power g and a legacy frequency in to you know be complete that hybrid solution so again thank you to everyone who participated today thank you for our hosts and we hope that everyone has a fantastic day please don't hesitate to reach out to us we are always here to support you and help you and thank you everyone today